Now let's see when we uh, apply a special type of group of drugs which are called thiazide drugs. When these thiazide drugs are applied, what really happens to this particular part of the membrane? Let's suppose this is the new drug now and this drug is, yes, Yeah, this is the drug and this drug is thiazide drug, right? It may be hydrochlorothiazide, it may be thiazide, thiazide-like thiazide drugs. Actually, these thiazide-like drugs, what they really do? These drugs basically bind with the, what is this? Sodium chloride co-transporters or we call it sodium chloride symports, right? This was sodium potassium 2 chloride co-transporter. Now you have to compare this and that. So let's focus all of this area in our mind, right? So this is sodium potassium 2 chloride where furosemide works. So furosemide work in which area? Number one, it work on thick part of sending limb of loop of Henle and early part of distal convoluted tubule. Thiazide work on cells of the distal convoluted tubule. Furosemide loop diuretic work on sodium potassium 2 chloride luminal transporters or symports. Thiazide work on sodium chloride transporters. Then another thing, that fluorosemide are working in that area which absorb normally a very heavy load of the sodium, that is 25 to 35% of the sodium. This thiazide are working in that part of the nephron which absorb only 8, 5 to 8% of the sodium. So naturally, when fluorosemide blocks its area, there is heavy nitrogenesis, and when thiazides block their area, there is mild, relatively, moderate degree of nitrogenesis and diuresis. Then another important point was that when this sodium chloride transporter is blocked, of course these cells are not getting sodium and chloride and this sodium and chloride is moving more, delivered to the more distal part of the nephron. When they are, this sodium and chloride is delivered to the more distal part of the nephron, of course they are passing by the principal cells and they exchange the sodium with the Potassium. So again, it means thiazide diuretics will also lead to heavy losses of potassium. potassium. Again, what are the reasons of potassium losses? One thing is very simple because some extra sodium is delivered to the principal cell, and this uh, sodium will go inside the cell, and these cells will use their sodium potassium ATPases excessively to push the sodium to the interstitial area back to the blood. During this business, they will bring extra amount of potassium into cell and gradient of potassium from the cell to the lumen will become more and potassium will be del delivered more effectively to the lumen and caligiuresis will be there. Second mechanism is that not only sodium is delivered extra to the principal cells luminal phase, but chloride is also not absorbed. So chloride is also delivered in extra amount to this area and this chloride which comes over here, it makes the lumen more electronegative. When this lumen becomes more electronegative, then again chances of potassium to be attracted to the lumen and getting lost into urine are more. Then another point which is uh, more uh, as well important, that this sodium and chloride, when these are delivered to the distal part of the nephron, along with sodium and chloride, water is of course going and this water will uh, increase, you can say, dilute the potassium, whatever potassium is present over luminal area, this extra water coming along with the sodium and chloride will wash away that potassium and this concentration of potassium will fall into luminal area. So again more potassium will shift from the cell to the luminal area due to enhanced concentration gradient from the potassium from the cell, principal cell to the luminal area. So it means that like fluosemide, thiazides are also potassium wasting diuretics. Again what we should say that like furosemide, Thiazides are also potassium wasting diuretics. Is that right? Now, what, what is really uh, another important point to understand that when you have applied the thiazides, of course, cell is not getting sodium. If cell is not getting sodium, now look at a very important point that because sodium potassium ATPases are working, they have to expel the sodium out. So cell should get sodium from some side. Normally, cell gets sodium from the luminal side where sodium and chloride enter and cell gets sodium from the basolateral uh, side, side from where sodium is ex uh, coming into cell in exchange of calcium being expelled to the interstitium. Now, when the sodium supply from the luminal side to the distal convoluted cell cytoplasm has been reduced to the blockage of the sodium chloride symport due to thiazide, then extra sodium, uh, then 
uh, the sodium become very less in the cell and cell gets extra sodium by using, over using the pump. Which pump? Not pump actually, it should be called the sodium calcium exchanger. So more and more sodium is coming in. And of course, when more and more sodium will be coming in through this exchanger as sodium supply from this side has been blocked. So more and more sodium is coming from this side, then naturally more and more calcium will be going from the basolateral side to the blood side. And if extra calcium is going out, it means intracellular calcium become very less. So drag of the then uh, calcium pull from the lumen to the cell will decrease or increase? increase? It will increase. So it means that when you are giving thiazides, then uh, calcium is being absorbed at higher constant or with uh, higher avidity. So what we can say this is a calcium and this calcium is being absorbed more effectively by the distal convoluted tubular cells when we are using thiazide. What did we learn from here? The thiazides are calcium retaining drugs. Thiazides are calcium retaining drugs. Now it has some clinical implications. Number one, for some people when there is idiopathic hypercalciuria in some families there is a problem called idiopathic hypercalciuria and these people calcium reabsorption is not very effective so extra loads of calcium are going to the distal part of the nephron and naturally these people this, this extra calcium plays a big role in formation of renal stones special, especially calcium oxalate stones again let me repeat it what really happens in some people uh, there is a problem called idiopathic hypercalciuria that these people are losing excessive amount of calcium in trijurin probably there is some problem with reabsorption of calcium in the nephron. So naturally when calcium is filtered freely but not reabsorbed really well, so extra amount of calcium will appear into urine. Right? When they are throwing more and more calcium into urinary system, the chances of formation of calcium related stone is high. So these people get again and again renal stones. One of the treatment in these patients is give low dose thiazides for a long time. When you are giving low dose, low dose thiazides, Right, naturally when sodium is not entering from the luminal side, sodium will enter from basolateral side in exchange with the intracellular calcium to extra to interstitium. And when cells become poor into poor in calcium, the luminal side will take up the calcium from the luminal side into cell and then back to the body. So distal part of the urinary system will not get enough calcium to make stones more frequently. Right? So now let's compare a very important point between the a thiazide usage and frosamide usage and relationship with the calcium. Of course, every every student knows that uh, both of them are natriuretic drugs. Both of them are kelyuretic drugs. But very few and very good students know that both of them affect the calcium but in an opposite way. That uh, frosamide, once frosamide is there, calcium cannot be reabsorbed from the paracellular root of thick part of sending limb of loop of Henle. So what really happens that there is a uh, excessive loss of calcium. So frosamide is uh, calcium wasting diuretic. diuretic or uh, that is why frosamide sometimes can be used along with the normal saline uh, for the handling of the acute hypercalcemic state. Right opposite to that thiazides uh, they don't waste the calcium rather they retain calcium and uh, one interesting thing. Uh, in, they have seen that if thiazides are used for a long time, so calcium is so effectively retained in the body that osteoporosis is started or bones mineralizations are, uh, you can say bone mineralization or bone mineral density is maintained very well, especially in the hip bones or in the neck of the femur. So you can re simply remember thiazides retain the calcium for thighs. Actually it is a little above the thighs, right? So thiazides retain the calcium for the thigh, thigh bones but actually it is above the thigh bones which is your yep. pelvic bone right so we can say, and of course in the spine as well so people who who have been using now listen if there are two group of old ladies if they are using one group is using first group is using frosamide on the long term basis and second group is using thiazides on the long term basis so you will find that over the long time the group with the frosamide juice will have accelerated accelerated osteoporosis and group which is using you can say thiazide for a long time uh, their even normal age related osteoporosis will be retarded right is it clear to you now again after having said all of this let's compare uh, frosamides with the thiazides look frosamides work at thick ascending limb of loop of Henle mainly thiazides work mainly on the distal convoluted tubular cells 
right? Frosemide work on sodium. Put, uh, one thing common: frosemide work on the luminal side. Thiazides also work on the luminal side. Frosemide need to be filtered or secreted by the proximal convoluted tubule in the nephron tube, right? Thiazides also need to be filtered as well as actively secreted in the nephron lumen because both of them have to go through the tubular fluid and work on the special integral proteins present on the luminal sides. Another point which is important is that frosemide and thiazides, both of them have their action dependent on prostaglandins because prostaglandins are now, if uh, you are taking some endomethacin or some other NSAID, then there is a chance your prostaglandin level goes down and both of them may not work well. Another point which is related here is that because both of them need to be secreted uh, from the blood through the proximal convoluted tubule to the lumen. If frosemide, attention please, as I said that both of them, frosemide as well as thiazide, they work from the luminal, luminal side. So they have to be present in the lumen and this duty is mainly done by proximal convoluted tubular cells. We take up frosemide and thiazide from the blood side and pump them to are responsible to transfer of uh, organic material and other compound drugs and penicillin and uric acid and many other substances from this side to that. Is that right? Now, here we should know that that if someone has impaired renal function, then it's quite possible that frosemide or you can say thiazide may not reach into lumen in enough concentration and under these circumstances uh, there will be loss of diuretic function in patient with failing renal system. Another related point is, as I am trying to stress, that frosemide and thiazides, they must be taken from the peritubular system, uh, capillary and interstitial system, and uh, by the proximal uh, convoluted tubular cells, the, these drugs should be actively transported or secreted, you can say, to the lumen. So, uh, this pathway is shared by the... This pathway is shared by the uric acid as well. So it's very easy to understand that if you are using these drugs chronically, then naturally uh, if this pathway transport, proximal convoluted tubular transport pathway, which is for organic acids and bases, right, if that is utilized by these drugs for transportation, then our uric acid may not be transport, transferred properly from the blood to the lumen. To the, uh, lumen. So uh, there may, this may end up into hyperuric semia by both of them. So again I will repeat it that frosemide and thiazides both work on the luminal side. Both of them work on the integral proteins which are concerned with sodium absorption. Both of them are natri uh, they produce natriuresis. Both of them produce diuresis. Both of them produce chelyuresis. But a very very important point. Loop diuretics waste calcium and your uh, you can say thiazides retain calcium. calcium right this is a very big difference which I, I would like to stress upon even thousand times but I'm going to excuse you right now so uh, let's go ahead but uh, there is there are still many differences what are the differences this is working on thick ascending limb of loop of Henle that is working on distal convoluted tubular cell frosemide is working on sodium potassium two chloride uh, co-transporter and this is working, uh, thiazide is working on sodium chloride transporter. Frosemide is uh, helping in uh, preventing the reabsorption of calcium, right? And thiazide is enhancing the reabsorption of calcium. calcium. Frosemide is a, a strong diuretic. Thiazide is mild to moderate diuretic, right? 